as I'm sure you guys are aware, today is Father's Day. And it's an opportunity to celebrate all those who, um, who father, who have that sort of role in our lives. Those individuals who are there that when push comes to shove, they've always got our back. Keen to introduce new skills, uh, open us up to new experiences, all those sorts of things, and from all different walks of life. To those who father us, we salute you. Um, in fact, let's take a moment just to have a round of applause for all those who do father us in our lives. Brilliant. And for dads, we, we love you for your dancing. Uh, we love you for your, your keen desire to be awkward in social situations. Um, and also for, for dadisms. Uh, now, if you haven't heard of the word uh, um, uh, dadism, essentially what it is, is it's your typical phrases that come from dads, okay? But the nature of these comments uh, are quite interesting. You know, there's no real desire to uh, actually address the point, uh, but actually the nature of their comment is hopefully to respond in a way that keeps most people satisfied. Um, James is going to pop them on the screen. Ah, oh, fantastic. So if we've got our first one up on the screen, um, we shall see. Um, kids, listen carefully, because this is the key. You can figure out what your dads are actually saying to you. Um, who's heard their dad say, we shall see? You ask them a question, and they go, yeah, we shall see, that sort of thing. Um, I, I, did, I did a bit of research uh, to find out the translation for this. Um, and it's on the next slide, James. We shall see actually means no. Um, so, so kids, listen, whenever your, whenever your dad says uh, we shall see, um, essentially what they're saying is no. I can relate to that. I remember when I was about 17 years old and I uh, spoke to my dad and I said, oh, dad, I'm at that, that age where I can drive now. Um, do you reckon I could get a car? And he said, we shall see. <laughs> Needless to say, I never got the car from him. All right, let's have our second one, James. Go and ask your mother. How many of you folks have heard those ones? You can see all the mums being like, yeah, I've been chucked under the bus there. <laughs> um, yeah, for this one, go and ask your mother, uh, translates to, next slide, James. Uh, I don't want the responsibility of making a wrong decision. You know, there's this keenness actually to go, oh, just ask your mother because probably whatever I say is not going to be right. Um, again, I can relate to this because when I was asking my dad for a car, um, sometimes he would say, go and ask your mother. Fair play to my mum, though. She did get me a car. Um, so maybe there is truth in that. Uh, last one. Here we go. I'm not sleeping. I'm just resting my eyes. Who's heard that one? Yeah, a few of you again. Um, yeah, really interesting. Again, did the research to, to, to translate this phrase. And it translates to, uh, I want to sleep, but I have to show interest in what you're showing or telling me. So essentially, actually, um, you know, they feel an obligation to engage. Really, they just want to kip. Uh, again, I can relate to this, uh, because when I was talking to my dad about getting a car, um, I was trying to show him what car I wanted. Um, and he said, leave me be. Uh, but that's by the by. We've all found various moments in our lives where our dads say something different to maybe what they actually mean. Um, and in the Bible, Jesus used to use stories and illustrations to help people understand what he was saying. But sometimes folks like the disciples didn't really get it, or they didn't understand at all what he was trying to say. But in this passage, Jesus says that there will be a time where I talk to you without using all those illustrations, all those stories and that I will tell you plainly about my Father. You see, Jesus isn't just telling us about some random individual. He's telling us about a Father that loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus into the world to meet us and to pay the price for our wrongdoings. Don't get me wrong. Fathers um, are incredible. Those who have that sort of responsibility, they have done an incredible job. And I can testify to that. Uh, but Jesus' father takes things to a whole new level. You see, right in the beginning, 
um, the world was made by God and, and, and he looked at his creation and he said it's, it's good. He looked at the human beings that he made and he said it was very good. Um, we had perfect relationship as mankind with God, a perfect relationship with God's creation. But then curiosity and intrigue took over and it got the better of us and we decided that actually we knew what was best. And so we turned away from God looking to do our own thing. That's what the Bible calls sin, to go against God. And so there's a consequence for the fracturing of that relationship, that there's judgment, that there's death, there's separation from God. Now, you hear that, and that sounds pretty bleak and pretty dire. Now, God is a just God, but he's also a merciful God. And we see that by him sending his son, Jesus Christ, into this world, to walk and talk with us, to eat with us, to do life with us, and to go to the cross for us. You see, Jesus, who was perfect and blameless and without sin, took the place that we deserved on the cross for our going against God, for our sin. But then three days later, greatest day in history, Jesus rises from the dead, conquering sin, conquering death, that we might be able to have that right relationship with God once again. That we might be able to experience his grace and his mercy as he forgives us. That he doesn't hold our past against us. So we hear that and we go, yeah, that sounds class. Oh, okay, what do I need to do? Well, that's the thing. When it comes to a relationship with God, with, with, with his son Jesus, it's not an active thing that we sit there and watch go by, but it's active. We claim it. We make a choice. We say, I want to put my trust and my hope in Jesus. It's an opportunity for us to come to him and say sorry, but to say thank you as well for what he has done. And so if today you don't necessarily know uh, Jesus personally, um, and you would like to, I'd invite you just to um, listen to the words of this prayer um, that I'm about to read out. And maybe if it resonates with you, then just say it um, sort of in your heart, in your mind. So let us pray. I'm sorry, Lord, for all my sins, and I repent of them all. I give you my life today, and I confess my faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, that he is Lord. I believe that Jesus died and resurrected to give me eternal life, that I may enjoy that relationship with you. I confess my faith in him, and I accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. I promise to faithfully serve Jesus Christ throughout the days of my life. Amen. If that is something that to, um, uh, to talk to someone about it, feel free to come and talk to me after the service um, or with any of our other staff members would be, would be willing to chat. See, when it comes to Father's Day, there's a whole range of feelings that are experienced. You know, for some, as I said at the beginning, it's a time to celebrate fatherhood. It's an opportunity to celebrate the gifts and the support that those in father, in father positions give us. But for some, it's also a hard day. You know, for some, um, they recognize that their earthly father is no longer with them or is out of the picture. But here in this passage that we've heard today, this is a love from a father that is unrivaled, that cannot be matched, that is unconditional. Sometimes we look to the world to look for that level of love. But there's only one person who does that. And that person, that father, sent his son into this world to pay the price that we deserve so that we may experience that love from God. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity for us to be here today to meet in fellowship. And Father, we thank you for your love that far surpasses anything we could possibly imagine. 
Lord, you demonstrated your love by sending your son, Jesus Christ, into this world, perfect and blameless, without sin, so that he would take our place on the cross. We thank you that he conquered death. We thank you that we don't need to fear death anymore because you are far bigger than that. But Father, thank you for the unconditional love that you show to us. That when we come to you, when we come to Jesus, our past doesn't hold us back. It doesn't limit the love that we can experience. It doesn't increase or decrease over the day. It remains constant. And Father, we're so grateful for that. So thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.